What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I'm Go Pony, and today we are in the new 2020 Honda CRV courtesy of Apple Honda in York PA. And so I wanted to check this one out this year because there have been plenty of changes actually for the 2020 CRV. Not only that, this thing is insanely reliable, it's rated above average reliability by consumer reports. So therefore it is a pretty solid bet to start right there. So what do you say? Let's go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so of course there will be a few different trim levels for the 2020 CRV. First one being the LX starting at $25,050. Then you have the EX starting at $27,560. EXL starting at $30,050. And lastly, the Touring, the one we are in today, starting at $33,250. And so regardless of trim level though, power plant on this one is going to be the same. Powering this little beast is going to be a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder engine and this is the same engine standard across the board this year previously there was a naturally aspirated engine available so that's why i put it that way but nonetheless power comes in at 190 horsepower at 5600 rpm 179 pound feet of torque available from the power band of 2000 to 5000 rpm power is going to be sent to either front wheels or all wheels through honda's all-wheel drive system of course power sent to the ground there through a cvt giving you a zero to 60 time approximately 7.5 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 28 in the city 34 highway for the front wheel drive 27 city 32 highway for the all-wheel drive either way taking regular unleaded fuel aka 87 octane so save you a little bit of money there but do want to mention before we do any kind of accelerations here there are a couple different driving modes there is a sport mode you can simply shift into and then there is also an eco mode just to the right of the shifter and that's one thing i always played around with with my previous civics if you put that econ mode on when you're on a long stretch of highway maybe on your commute to work that is going to save you a ton of mpg and what I've found in my Civics at least is quite substantially higher than the highway number given to us on the actual sticker. So that is something to consider if you are using this as a commuter vehicle. But nonetheless, what those driving modes are actually going to do is adjust things like the shift points, throttle response, and actually the climate control settings. If you did put it in that econ mode, it is actually going to decrease some of the climate control. So saving a little bit of energy there. Having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's have some fun. Let's actually put the shifter into that sport driving mode. It did just immediately downshift for me like they always do giving you more power on demand so that's always a good thing but having done that let's go ahead and do a quick little acceleration here and let's see how quickly we can get this new 2020 honda crv up to speed and here we go huh does actually kind of pin you in the back of your seat certainly not going to have any issues with merging onto the highway in the crv uh, kind of surprised there then again on the other hand i i never like cvts they're kind of emotionless to kind of take the joy out of a uh, joy out of driving a little bit but still a very impressive acceleration more than i expected at least for the honda crv so that was actually kind of nice but to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so up front you're going to have 11.1 inch ventilated front discs in the back 10.2 inch solid rear discs as far as 60 to zero goes it comes in at 116 feet and for comparison's sake because that's actually a pretty decent number there mazda cx5 comes in at 123 feet 2024 to escape also 123 feet so 116 feet as far as stopping goes is definitely pretty darn good better than the competition i should say as far as the braking feel goes definitely excellent no brake pedal delay in the crv and that is something i do like to mention because if you jump up actually to the acura rdx there's a little brake pedal delay there so it is kind of nice that the honda crv gets it right there anywho touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back a multi-link double wishbone rear suspension also front and rear stabilizer bars it's all pretty standard for the most part as far as ride quality goes it's actually been really nice. I just hit a pothole back there. It certainly soaked that up pretty nicely. So certainly don't see any issues taking the CRV to Ocean City or any road trips. So that is definitely on point. As far as the steering feel goes, it's actually a little bit on the heavier side. So that kind of surprised me too. Usually when you hop in a CRV, you expect it to be kind of loosey goosey and not much emotion there, but it is kind of a heavier weighted steering wheel, which is a good thing. It's not like the typical SUV, which is kind of super loosey goosey and there's no steering response. Of course, it's not too heavy. I'm just saying it is 
nice weight to the steering wheel on this CRV. As far as cabin noise goes, that has been absolutely excellent. I feel like I can hear myself a lot louder in this car than the previous Civic Si just got in, but certainly no issues with exterior noises coming into the cabin, so that is certainly on point as well. Then touching on visibility a little bit, I can see perfectly fine out the back. The second row headrests are kind of beefy, but still, because of the shape of the CRV, you really don't have any issues with visibility, so that is definitely on point as well. But so now that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior because we actually do have a new color for 2020 on this particular CRV we have today. So let's go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this new 2020 Honda CRV. All right, you guys, and here it is the 2020 Honda CRV with its revised front end for 2020. For instance, that thick chrome bar that used to be to the left and the right of the Honda emblem is now black. That is one of the subtle differences you can find. Silver trim line accenting in the lower portion of the front bumper. That's going to be around the fog lights down there and uh, kind of accenting the intercooler found on the bottom portion of the front bumper as well. And quite honestly, that's probably the two most noticeable differences up front there. So we're just gonna leave it at that. But to the sides, you will find multi-reflector halogen headlights for the LX, EX, and EXL trim levels. And of course, they will come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out, they will turn on automatically for you there. And you will actually get LED daytime running lights that will come standard up front as well, of course. If you went with the EX trim level and up, that is going to add those fog lights just below and you will actually find LED headlights if you were to go with the top of the line touring trim level that you are currently looking at right now. And it's a slightly different housings for those headlights too with the touring compared to the rest of the three trim levels as well. So I did want to mention that too. And so taking a step back real quick, I did want to mention some of the measurements in case you were parking this in a tight area that you were used to or a garage or anything like that. As far as the length goes, that comes in at 182.1 inches. Height comes in at 66.5 inches with 73 inches even and up front you will find 8.2 inches of ground clearance in case you have a rocky driveway perhaps on the back roads or anything like that but let's go ahead now and make our way to the side of this one roof rails are actually going to come standard with the touring trim level only i do like the silver roof rails too i like that they're silver instead of just black a nice little accent color to the roof there Nonetheless, rear privacy glass, EX trim level and up. That does mean you will not get rear privacy glass if you were to go with the LX trim level. I do want to emphasize that. Chrome window surrounds, of course, will come standard as well. And let's take a look at the side mirrors now. Black powered side mirrors will come with the LX trim level. However, if you go with the EX trim level and up, you will find body colored heated power adjustable side mirrors with integrated turn signals. And again, that is specific to the EX, EXL, and touring trim levels, in case you were curious there. And by the way, one more thing before I continue here, I mentioned we had a new color. Rapid Red is the exterior color that you are currently looking at right now, just in case you were interested. I always like to mention that. Take a look down at the wheel setup. 17 inch alloy wheels will come with the LX trim level. 18 inch alloy wheels will come with the EX trims. And lastly, 19 inch alloy wheels are going to come with the touring trim level. And I do kind of like those chrome accents there in the side skirts. It ties together pretty well with those chrome window surrounds on the side too. So definitely a nice look to it. Up top, you will find a shark fin antenna towards the back and making your way to the back. Rear spoiler with an integrated brake light will come standard. Also just below that rear window wiper. And here's the funny thing. They eliminated the chrome around the Honda emblem in the front and they left it in the back. So I don't know, it's kind of interesting they did that, but nonetheless, I do like the 3D effect to the taillights, if you guys can kind of see that. And it is actually a smoked effect for the 2020 model year. You guys can kind of see those smoked housings to the lights for 2020. That is something they did not have previously. So kind of gives it a more aggressive appearance. So I do like that as well. Then moving down to the bottom here, when it comes to the exhaust outlets, they're actually gonna differ amongst the trim levels. They're actually gonna be tucked away if you go with the LX, EX or EXL trim levels. However, if you were to go with the Touring, you will find exposed dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips. So you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip.
It's open now since we are around back as far as opening that rear lift gate goes. There actually are a couple different ways. There is a button on the key fob that is probably the easiest route. There's also a button by the driver's left knee that is yet another way. Did want to mention, however, for the EXL and Touring trim levels, you will get a power lift gate. That's definitely convenient. And if you go with the Touring trim level, you will actually get a hands-free power lift gate. So all you need to do is simply walk up to that rear lift gate, kick your foot underneath the rear bumper, and that is going to automatically open up for you. So that is definitely something very convenient, especially if you have your hands full of kids or groceries or whatever, really. So it's definitely a convenient feature there to have. But once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at 39.2 cubic feet behind that second row. And so that is actually a good bit, you guys. For comparison's sake, the Toyota RAV4 comes in at 37.6 cubic feet. Mazda CX-5, 30.9 cubic feet. So CRV takes it among them at least so quite a bit of space if that was not enough space however those rear seats actually do fold down there is a 60 40 split bumping that up to 75.8 cubic feet and along with that in that cargo area i did want to also mention there are cargo area lights back there are cargo tie down anchors also for all trim levels and if you went with the ex trim level and up you will find a retractable cargo area cover as well and then i know somebody's going to ask is there any in-floor storage uh i guess you could say there is underneath that cargo floor there there's a spare tire of course so that is definitely a plus, but within that, there's quite a bit of space back there. So quite honestly, if you wanted to put maybe a tire inflator kit or something like that back there, you should definitely have more than enough space. So I would kind of call it in-floor storage, although Honda doesn't market it as such. So anyway, I still would have mentioned all of that nonetheless, but making our way up to the rear legroom, that comes in at 40.4 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. And actually for comparison's sake, once again, Mazda CX-5 comes in at 39.6 inches. Toyota RAV4 comes in at 37.8 inches. So once again, Honda CRV takes it as far as rear legroom goes at least. And also for those rear passengers, they will find a rear center armrest with cup holders for all trims. Also rear ventilation back there for all trim levels as well. It's definitely not something that always comes standard on the bottom trim level, believe it or not. So that's definitely nice. Then make your way to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating you can find with the LX and EX trim levels. If you jump up to the EXL or Touring, you will find a 12-way power adjustable driver's seat with four-way power lumbar. And the EX trim level and up is gonna give you heated front seats. Touring trim level is gonna give you leather finishes. That's definitely nice, is what we have today. And once again, with the Touring, you will find two position memory settings as well. They're going to be on the driver's side door there. Then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It will come leather wrapped for the EXL and Touring trim levels. Heated as well if you were to go with the Touring. So on a 40 degree day here in Pennsylvania, that heated steering wheel is definitely quite nice. And by the way, the button's on the right side of the steering wheel in case you were curious where that button was. But... Nonetheless, let's get to the start up here. Let me show you guys the key here to start. You have your Honda logo on the one side and when you flip it over, lock, unlock, and that button to pop the rear hatch. And then that circular button on the side there, that is actually a remote start. And so with the EX trim level and up, EX trim level, I feel like is really the sweet spot for value with the CRV, if you ask me at least. You will find a remote start and a push button start as well. The LX isn't gonna get either of them, but the EX trim level and up will. So therefore, all I'm going to do is simply just put my foot on the brake and press that red engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there. It's open then once started up, engine temp is all the way to the left, fuel information all the way to the right, and then there is a large digital display front and center, which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounting controls on the left side there. And so with that, you will find a digital speedometer, a fairly large digital speedometer. You got your RPM readout all the way to the top, outside temperature, time of the day, and of course, plenty of other informations like your radio settings, your oil life remaining when you need your next oil change essentially. And that's always nice because you'll find you don't necessarily need it every even three to 5,000 miles. Sometimes you can go six or 7,000 miles before the car tells you that it needs its next oil change. So it's definitely nice, a little money saving measure there really. And there's plenty of other things actually you could check out up there as well. Then make your way to overall interior quality. If you wanted a power moonroof, simply once again, go with the EX trim level and up. Dual zone climate control, once again, the EX trim level and up. 
home link controls with the EXL and touring trim levels and they're actually going to be found on the roof here for up to three different garage doors and just beside that actually overhead sunglass holder that's actually going to be all trim levels though but it's nice having garage door openers you don't have the rattling of the garage door opener on the driver's side visor it's always a plus but ambient lighting you can find with the touring trim level wireless phone charger once again with the touring trim level located just in front of the cup holders there but perhaps probably the first thing I noticed when I first got into the CRV was the wood grain accents found not only on the back doors but the front doors just on top of the passenger side glove box there it's basically everywhere a very high-end finish to a CRV that is nice to have wood grain accents there and actually it kind of continues the high endness kind of continues just above that passenger side glove box you have a leather stitch finish all the way up that is definitely a nice touch as well with a piano black interior trim line going right across the middle there but wood grain accents also just beside the driver and passenger seating area as well of course you have two usb charging ports just in front of the wireless phone charger you have two cup holders just behind that and a very deep cargo area just behind the cup holders along with the 12 volt power outlet down there as well cool thing with this cargo area though is when you actually open up that armrest there there is actually a fold down tray with a rubberized bottom if you had some things that maybe slide around a lot that rubberized bottom is definitely going to help out so that's definitely a plus as well but this is a really high-end finish, I will say, to the CRV. More than I'm used to seeing in a CRV. The only thing I would possibly add is maybe a high-end headliner because there's A pillars on the inside there. They're just plastic, but a high-end headliner, whether it be Alcantara suede or even a nice felt or something soft, really, not a plastic, would definitely be a plus to this one. But overall, really, I'm just being picky there because overall, it is a very nice, luxurious, even, interior in the CRV. So well done, Honda, there. But let's now go ahead and take a look at the tech display. Five inch color LCD screen will come with the LX. If you go with the EX trim level and up, once again, the sweet spot here for the CRV, seven inch high resolution color touchscreen display. And although seven inches is more than five inches, I will say seven inches is kind of behind the times when it comes to the competition. A lot of the other SUVs in this class will have available eight inch color touchscreen displays like the RAV4, like the Santa Fe, even Subaru has been going to like 11, 12 inch color touchscreen displays, which is crazy, but it's cool. So I don't know, maybe Honda can increase the screen size a little bit, but it's not really a big deal honestly but Bluetooth and audio streaming will come standard across the board Android Auto and Apple CarPlay if you go with the EX trim level and up and that is of course going to give you free navigation through your smartphone the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs up there and there's a couple other apps actually as well factory navigation is going to come with the touring trim level and of course you can check out your radio settings up there as well and by the way for each trim level of the CRV you will find a different number of speakers when it comes to the sound system I found that quite entertaining honestly LX trim level is going to give you a four speaker sound system with 160 watts EX trim level is going to give you six speakers and 180 watts EXL trim level is going to give you eight speakers yet still 180 watts and lastly the touring is going to give you a nine speaker sound system basically adding a subwoofer to the eight speaker one with 330 watts so guys know what we have to do next what do you say let's go ahead and turn on the radio here see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one Sound system is amazing. I love that. Bass is ridiculous. Clarity is great. Cl loudness is more than enough for the size of the CRV. That freaking takes you to another world. I absolutely love it. Sound system is banging in the touring trim level. I will say that. Anywho, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the CRV in reverse, you will find a multi angle rear view camera. Multi angle meaning bottom left hand corner, you actually have three different views you can choose from if you like, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. It's the first thing on safety I wanted to mention to you guys is the CRV is an IIHS top safety pick, so that's always a plus to get started with. Front side and side curtain airbags will come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also back there, rear child door locks. There's a tire pressure monitoring system that will come standard. 
Also standard across the board though, Honda Sensing. Let me elaborate on what that actually is. Forward collision warning is included with that, lane departure warning, collision mitigation braking system, and a road departure mitigation system as well. Now going back to the EX trim level, which I have told you guys is really the value sweet spot for the CRV, that is going to add a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, again for the EX trim level and up. And the EXL and Touring trim levels are also going to add for you an auto dimming rear view mirror. Hey, right, so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. If you wanted to support the channel, feel free to buy some merch just below the video. I don't know if I'm talking fast enough for you guys or not, but be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're new to new car reviews. <laughs> Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.